spacecraft, and I can see their figures, and they're, they're staring out of the craft at me. And, you know, they have different shaped heads, you know. Looks like they were kind of like the grays, but, you know, it's still too far for me to see any great detail, but I could definitely see it was lit, and there was, there was creatures or beings or somebody staring at me. At first, I said, was that the lift? Like, you know, it's the wrong shape, the cigar shape, not the wind shape. But the other thing that happened was all the traffic stopped. Now, I lived in a somewhat busy street. It was a, a little side uh, uh, leg of the, the bus. So the bus would come down one of the last uh, journeys of the night, and there were cars that come down the hill. And so... Uh, the whole time I was looking at this, not not a single car came by, but the cricket stopped cricketing. I went, whoa. It was almost like a, a barometer shift or a dimensional shift. I could feel the vibe of the, the whole energy of the, the world <laughs> where I was standing shifted. And they, and they just didn't go away. And I was I got relaxed about it. You know, it's kind of caught off guard. I, I, I relaxed and I just started sending thoughts to them. And I think they, I had, I've often had telepathy, but I think they had strong words or impressions. It was just like a, a really sweet, loving energy. I mean, there was so no fear whatsoever, no anxiety. And I, I stared at them a while. And I said, you know, I'm getting tired. I really thank you for visiting with me and for showing yourself to me. But I got I to gotta go in. I'm, I'm getting tired. I wanna, and it was starting to get chilly because when the sun goes down after a couple of hours, it's chilly. So it was, so it was probably around 9.30. You know, it was starting to get chilly. Anyway, um, then years later, I found out that that was, you know, the, the Dracos apparently like the cigar-shaped craft. Not sure, but the ones the beings I saw more more like uh, gray beings, but slightly different. And then uh, I was researching Betty and Barney Hill's encounter, and I saw the um, you know the rendition of their craft, and I go, oh, that's very close to what I saw. Wasn't it fast? So anyway, maybe somebody will do an analysis of all the different craft and all the sightings and all the different beings. For all the years, but that was, uh, I was just so, I was so happy. I just went to bed going, oh, my God. I like you, Ronnie. She's so happy that you see them. Yeah. Yeah. To see them. Ronnie, I can mention the mm-hmm. Allied Council. I worked uh, with my husband, and he and I, we met, uh, we don't know, we were scared of each other. We had worked uh, as uh, agents for the government out of country. But the Allied High Council somehow brought us together, and they're intelligent beings. And uh, now they they told us they represent all the peaceful galaxies. They formed an alliance for positive intelligence beings, and they do good in not only the galaxies here in this universe, but others. And uh, we were able, Janet calls it, the space, well, we call it UFO Secret Space right now on Facebook, and we each have a, a UFO Secret Space uh, domain name we bought, so we could try to make heads or tails of this. But, you know, whether people believe in gods or extraterrestrials or angels or messengers, uh-oh, Tommy fell off, or I guess he left, but anyway, just close to the end of the show. But uh, the Allied Council, you know, it, it doesn't really, for a while when I was writing and I introduced mine and Tom's story, I had talked to AIM out in California and uh, the movie Contact had come out. I'd already gone to Roswell and I uh, met with Glenn Dennis that got the little coffins for the aliens and heard his story about the nurse. And then Lawrence Spencer, uh, Janet had him come on and I, I got to read his book. He writes for Lulu like I do. And uh, my story was similar, but Janet remembered one of the days that she got me to open up a little bit about stuff I didn't want to. And uh, I, I got, because she said, how are you doing this? 
it was like I was remote viewing my past life as Errol. And then, lo and behold, uh, but I, uh, Lawrence called her A-I-R-L, and my memory was our Ariel. And I had told Janet about Ariel before uh, we heard about Errol. So she was saying, no, it's like Ariel. You know, he writes it, but a- Errol. <laughs> but she saw the similarities, and she had known my story from being on her radio show and talking one day. I don't think somebody showed up for her show, but she doesn't let me be on very many Aquarian radio shows in eight years. So it was the third time she had me on, and uh, I was duck, I was ducked down behind a, a something. I was ducked down and shy, and uh, the, uh, they pulled up all the police, the uh, police officer, not the police, the army, and. Uh, it, oh, it was terrible. But she asked me how I knew. I said, well, because I was there. But I was remote viewing a past life. So that goes with our consciousness thing that I really seriously want to uh, talk with Janet, Tommy, and you too because everybody has their own opinion. And they, everybody thinks they're right because it's in their head. And they experienced it or they've they've been to- told that. But we're hoping to work uh universally now because I know that God to me is everything and I know if I didn't make it I you can call it God or higher power or source or all that is or the big bang I don't care but I do believe in the way I was raised in my tradition so I choose to believe in a, in an all seeing all knowing but uh, at the same time uh, the way that some of the scientists have been training me in YouTube's they drop it down. Now, I work with a lot of quantum physicists, always did work with scientists in the government. So I understand the uh, quantum physics scientific point of view. But I did write the ACE Guide. So if anybody does care to hear my story, it's ACE Guide by T.J. Thurman Morris. And it's, I think it's on uh, Lulu. But it's got in there the story of my husband and the Allied Council and a lot to do with how it changed with the world religions because the Catholic Church responded automatically. And uh, I got to see the numbers that were in the millions on uh, because at that time they didn't block all of the people that tracked you on the, in the back ends. And I could see all the countries, Russia, China. Uh, you still can, but not as much. But back in that day, in 2007, because I was a web developer uh, with GoDaddy, I could see all the back end. I had American News Magazine. I was writing for American Chronicle. But it blew the world open with that story I was telling on UFO Digest and with uh, Dirk in Canada. And then the Catholic Church got involved. And if you can go back and track this uh, timeline, folks, but it was a huge deal because I was talking about NASA my husband working at NASA and here in Bogey, 12 o'clock or 4 o'clock or whatever it was. I don't remember now. But all the stories, because I was making it real about the Allied Council, because uh, my husband and I scared each other to death knowing the same story. Just like today, you know, I had Tommy talk about the Bigfoot, because I did, and also Janet talked about the Mothman, because Tommy talked about that big flying thing, right? So, Ronnie, I don't know what we're going to expose here, but I... Uh, you know, you ain't going to believe this. I guess it's saying in the title, we don't care where they believe it or not. Well, we can tell our stories in hope that people will want to listen. But I swear to you that there's stories I've got that have not been uh, written. But in this ACE guide, I I've, I've was shocked. I found it today. It, it had forgotten I wrote it 2007 to 2011 before 2012, and the the Allied Council had pretty much convinced me that by 2012, all these people, I was having to tell everybody in writing and being a big big influence on the Internet that the world wasn't going to come to an end. So I was doing my part, you know. A lot of people were, but I did my part. But the Allied Council, now they told me about the E.T. Graves and how they lost their planet, you know, in another galaxy. But uh, we can't hardly get light years in this galaxy. So I'd like people to know that a lot of these people that talk interplanetary or intergalaxy, uh, that's one level. But we also call it interstellar. And then we have, I've talked about the big ships that we use at the higher level 
And I'm on record now because uh, my daughter that died filmed me talking about it in an event we had here in Navarre Conference Center. So I have a about a 15-minute introduction, Ronnie, on that. So we may be able, now that it's 2020 and got through this other side, be able to talk about some of our reality, although if we present it like this, it don't matter if people believe us or not because I don't know how else to tell the truth. Right. Yeah, you can't, you can't, we can't get control of what people believe, but they got a right to hear it. Yeah, I agree. You can't, it's not, it's probably not important what they believe or not, but telling the tale, getting it out there. So I'm, I'm proud of you today, starting to speak up. It's really hard. We, we started this whole show with how hard it is for some people to say, to say it because there's always public ridicule and shaming and blaming, and, you know, that's a hard thing to face. It's really, as human beings, we rely upon approval of others, and, and disapproval or approval affects our own self-esteem, and that's kind of what we are. We're not solitary beasts. We're uh, sexual beings, and we, we tend to rely a lot upon, you know, getting approval. But as we get older and more mature, we just go, oh, I don't really care what they think. <laughs> you know, it's like, because I can't live my life based on what other people think of me or believe. I have to just be authentic and be who I am. So I think we've come a long way. So I'm really happy that we're authentically expressing it. And I encourage other people that have stories to tune in and, and start being real with yourself in your own life and speaking your personal truth. So that's why she says, I think we're almost out of time. I don't know if, we, if anybody's listening to me or not. Did we fall off? I would like three minutes. Three minutes. Go ahead. Yours. It's all yours, Ronnie. Take us all home. What would you like to tell us, <laughs> everybody? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we hope you guys enjoyed our episode today. If you ain't going to believe this, because uh, we're going to tell you some stuff that it's going to be hard for you to believe, but, and, and it might, might scare you a little bit, too, some of the weird stuff that we covered tonight. Um but we're going to be here every Saturday, uh, probably 7 p.m. Maybe some days we may be 3 p.m., but I think next week it's probably going to be 7 p.m. Uh, but we encourage you to, to, if you want to call in, feel free to call in and tell us what some of your paranormal stories or If you have a story that you're too shy to share, you can uh, email it to me, RonnieDawson11 at gmail.com, R-O-N-N-Y. D A W S O N one one at gmail dot com and I'd be happy to share it for you. So uh, next week I've, I've got a Bigfoot story next week and we'll, we'll we'll talk about it and we'll talk about some more paranormal madness and and we hope you really enjoy the show. We've had a good time putting it on and uh, like I said, there's just so much stuff out there and uh, so many people to share it and and I, and I enjoy hearing stuff that you know because. If you don't share it, uh, who's you know, eventually, when someday you're gonna die, nobody will ever. It'll be the end of the story. You know, you don't. The story can live forever if you're willing to share it. So don't let the story die. So don't let something that amazing die with you. So, and that's the reason. Like I said, some of the stories I've told tonight are from the stories of, of my dad, who's no longer here. So, uh, you know, the story lives on through me and to the ones I tell it to. So. We encourage you to call in, and we hope you enjoy the show. And I thank everybody. Thank TJ and Janet for coming in here, and I enjoy everybody that came in and shared their stories as well. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to say before we close it out? I think that's all for me. Uh, TJ, do you have any exit music that we can close the show with? You got something nice to play? Thank you. Anyway, CJ might be over there. Anyway, I think we're pretty complete. Uh, I really appreciate everybody coming. Thank you so much. And uh, TJ, would you like to say the final word? And then we will say goodbye. So I'm going to say aloha, everybody, and thank you for joining us. This has been the um, well, my, my uh, show with the Korean Radio. And uh, TJ's is uh, TJ Morrison's Radio. 
and this um, this show is part of a series called Yes.